All right, this is the Uncut Live podcast segment. I'm, I'm changing the format for how I'm doing this uh, stuff a little bit, sort of. Tea. Tea, tea in Asia, by the way, comes like this. Maybe you can see the, the Chinese uh, written on the top of it. You also hold it a bit, a bit closer. You, you, you get to see the Chinese. Oh, you know, yeah. Oh, mini. There you know. Well, now you know where I buy my tea. There's like 100 million shops like this all around. And I must live within 10 nautical miles of one of them on this island. So I'm changing the format. Because I've said this uncut thing is a pilot. We're running, we're running a, a mini pilot series, and I, I keep saying this is going to be the last one, and I think this time it's really going to be the last one that's, that's, that's free and available like this. These uncut podcasts are free through Daily Motion, which have advertisements. Through Facebook, like the normal podcast, the, the, the weekly podcast, 10 minutes on key, ending with the point, they are going to be uh, unlisted and ad free. So if you want the unlisted ad free jesse.coffee, a dollar a month. Now you can do a dollar a month through Patreon, get it that way, or you can do uh, $11 a year. So it's one month free if you sign up through jesse.coffee. Okay. Uh, like jesse.com, like go to jessesteel.com, you'll see the jesse. It's HTTPs colon slash slash jesse dot coffee c-o-f-f-e -E. it's not dot com it's dot coffee uh <clears throat> pardon my french the tea is so filling you know here in asia so these are going to be like i say available through daily motion watch on jesse dot coffee pacific daily times editorials are always available ad free at the pacific daily times youtube channel and uh, but you get a nice, by, by going to, by, by doing the dollar a month thing at jesse.coffee, you get the dollar premium page and that will load up the ad free versions. Nice, clickable, watch it without the ads. And I am going to do access to archive posts because they won't be listed on Facebook. So if you want to go back and find them, use them. And again, everything is free to download. So if you want to download uh, a picture somehow from Facebook, if, if you're able to stream and capture whatever video that you're able to get that and use that uh, through archives. So all that comes with a dollar a month. All right. So this is available. This is free, but this is my uncut podcast where I just uh, do random whatever talks. Uh, what happened last week? I think I want to show you, I'm going to start wiggling stuff around here. If I go to write.pink slash handwriting, I'm going to do a little screen share. I'm going to do my screen share. How do, I, how do I find my screen share on here? I need a screen share. Uh, I need a plan. Where's my plan? Oh, primary display. If I turn that up. Oh, there we are. Okay, I uh, do like the pasture I always wanted to do and scale myself down to size. The, uh, yeah, the, the, making these were exhausting and, and they're there, they're, they're here, they're ready. And I'm, I'm getting to a point where I may do uh, children's books with a focus on phonics, there's no reason that we can't learn phonics. You know, you know, I'll tell you what. Maybe you don't know what this is about. Let me explain what this what this is here. I, I've always believed in trying to teach stuff through very, very, very simple means. And I think today, the, the I'm going to talk about my experience as a teacher. I was a substitute teacher for a very short time, and my father was a, a teacher, and I taught piano lessons in America uh, for 10 years, and my former students are now graduated college, and, and they're good at what they do. Uh, there was one uh, family that had a younger brother that was too young to learn piano for me, and somehow I just knew that I wasn't going to be around when he became of age to learn, so I taught his three older siblings different 
parts of piano and he grew up learning those different parts from them. And I, I did that specifically to, to try to make him well-rounded. Uh, Sean Bale, cheerio, man, uh, did that for you. So the, uh, I, 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 through that, I, you know, I, I would teach 10 years worth of piano material in 18 months. And I would do it by focusing on technique exercises. You know, this guy, I, I tell you, I'm, I'm really amazed and motivated. You know, the, the, the childish human nature of me, I'm ashamed to say, but being vulnerable and real, there's a little bit of jealousy that I have. Like, why couldn't I have a good teacher like that when I was a kid? And the truth is, I had very good patient teachers, but the, the music teaching culture bought the lie from the 1900s Industrial Revolution that the way to learn music was to learn to read first. Music was never taught that way. Hundreds of years, people, you know, the teacher would show the student, this is how you play it, and would explain harmony. You could say, this is the basic harmony of how that works, and this is an inversion, and there's no book. You're just a teacher showing it, demonstrating it, and kids would learn songs by rote. It's called by rote. You just, you don't even know what it is. You just, your hands wind up and go. You kind of get, it's like, it's like spelling, you know, I, I don't know how to spell the word, but I can write it correctly. Same thing with typing. That's rote, R-O-T-E, rote. You can learn by reading. You can learn by memorizing, like you know individually what the notes are and can think about it. Or you just wind yourself up like a, 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 a clock, and, or an, eight, an eight day clock, as my grandmother would say. You're wound up like an eight day clock. And just go and play. Well, rote, was the teaching method in the early stages of music. Once students understood harmony, they knew they were playing a, a C major, an A minor, a, you know, an E diminished. Once they knew what they were playing, then they would start to learn notes, uh, like reading, like written sheet music. But with the Industrial Revolution, pianos were stronger, cheaper, they turned them upright to make them compact to fit in people's houses better. That was that was a marketing thing. It was not a good uh, upright pianos were not designed to sound better. They were designed to save floor space when you know they were ma being mass produced because pianos were louder. More people could listen to them because they could make a louder noise. So they were stronger and therefore louder. Everybody fell in love with it. Everybody could buy them because they were cheaper being mass produced in factories and everybody wanted to learn and there weren't enough teachers. So the idea was teach students to read first and then the book will teach them. And, and the piano teacher would oversee and administer this process, assigning homework and so forth. Well, it's a failing method. It, 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 was, it was not rooted in how to properly teach. It was rooted in it was rooted in bureaucratic business people trying to boss around the actual talent. I mean, this goes back to, you know, managing talent. Well, this was mismanaged talent, and that's why there were so many quitters. Well, I wouldn't quit, even though it was really hard for me. I loved piano. My grandmother played piano. And I mean, like professionally, like my grandmother was wealthy and had money. She played in Maxime's in Paris at one point. And I actually played some Boogie Woogie at Maxime's in Chicago once. Very, very fun. Very honored, actually. So when it comes to teaching method, I would just teach people exercises, many, many different scales, many different exercises. I would do this thing. In fact, you know what? I've got a truckload of piano teaching method that I made with videos almost 10 years ago, and I've decided I'm going to put them up on YouTube this week. So I may make a video after this and talk about that and how I do that and so forth. And um, yeah, so I'll let that speak for itself. But teaching drills, the fewer the words, you don't need all but you know, a bunch of words on a paper, <laughs> babbling on about something, just show it to people and have it make sense. Well, that's what this is. Uh, <clears throat> if you look up behind me here, 
start on the green dot and and go straight to the yellow it's it's a it's a triangle if if you go to the website and click on it you can see well you know fine all right i'll i'll just click on you click on it it opens up a google document it's taking a moment cuz it's loading oh look at how cute and small it is can we zoom in please all right there we go are we allowed to there we go there it is um, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more just to see. Oh, no. See, Google's going to do this. Can I? Can, oh, there we go. All right. That's all we're allowed to zoom in. But I think you get the idea. Uh, the, the magenta stems, if you can see this Y here, that the, the, the magenta stem, that color is magenta. Uh, well, it's a tail. It's a descender. Those show ascenders and descenders. I found working with people in Asia that, you know, they they have this big empty box that they draw, and they don't have these nice lines like we do in in America. They they don't they don't know these lines. Now those are the same lines on the road. So it's interesting that Asians, East Asians, have trouble writing the letters on the proper line. Like they'll put the Y like up above and not know that it's wrong, even though you showed them a thousand times. Well, they also drive on the wrong side of the road. It's because they never learned to stay inside the lines of the road when they were writing, so they don't know how to stay inside the lines of the road look like a writing line when they're older. I just, it, you, know, just, you know, you'd learn this stuff being international. I talked about being international in the podcast today, you know, what, what goes on, and I'm getting a little bit irritated. My patience is running out on some people... Uh, taking advantage of my good nature. They think that they think that I can't defend myself legally or whatever, and so they take advantage. I have run into this in other countries, and I'm sort of thinking about flexing my muscles a little bit and not taking it. Because, you know, the truth is, sorry to distract, but on the topic of... Thank you. Thank you. On the topic of uh, international life, when I run into someone in another country who tries to control me uh, or charge me way too much money. I mean, I'm, I'm not some fat, rich American tourist running around spending money everywhere and not understanding the country and taking pictures of everything like I'm a, you know, a visitor at the zoo. You know, I'm, I'm over here trying to live normal life with people. Being exploited on a daily basis isn't really friendly. And by me not doing anything by me not defending myself i'm letting those people continue to exploit other people and so i kind of don't mind because you know my uncle told me jesse don't sweat the little stuff but there's a point you know there's there's a point where i think i'm not doing the world any favors by letting bad people continue to do bad things if someone does something bad to me, I should probably stand up for myself just as a means of standing up for everybody else. Just a thought, you know, like I, I think these things from time to time. So, educate. I've got like a, a second monitor over here, if you didn't know. So, it starts with a yellow circle or the green circle, goes to the yellow triangle, and then it stops at the red square. And, and the way this works is, I don't, I don't like, you know, these little directional arrows start this way and then go down and one and two and all this reading and stuff. Colors. Language is an art. Drawing letters is an artistic motion, an artistic concept. Keep the right side of the brain working. We need colors and shapes. We, we don't need, you know, art and figures and shapes. And then, oh, by the way, you've got to move resources over to the left side of your brain, diminish what you're doing on your right side of the brain by drawing the letters so that you can read text instructions and directional arrows explaining how and where you're supposed to go. It's like, that's the wrong type of thinking. And as a teacher who understands learning style and learning methods intuitively, I'm like, these directions and numbers and arrows are the wrong side of the brain. So, uh, start on the green dot, go straight to the yellow triangle. And, and I didn't want to complicate it. It's like everything else you should be able to figure out. And the red square is your last stop. 
and this was actually a big deal. Look at this T. Where's where's my T? There's the T. Uh, look, I'm getting good at because I'm watching myself on the screen. Look at look, I could do the weather. That wouldn't that be fun. I could do the weather. Look at this T. Typically, Asians would write the T across first and then down. However, that works on the on the mirror. So I, you know, I, so I, I put this red box there. Now, here's the thing: why I was so exhausted. Because originally when I did this, the red square was an octagon. I figured octagon, stop, but it was too small. And you don't always need to print it in color. So if you print this in black and white, which is probably smart, you don't need all this color, but you, know, you print practice sheets like this in black and white, because there are practice sheets. Where are we? I'm gonna close this. Uh, it, it was small, it was dark, it had no color. The green circle and, and a red octagon both looked like circles. Here, look, look, look at this. This was the, the preparation sheet. I'll let this load. Uh, so I had to go back and find all this, you know, by writing these, these are basic letters and you learn some basic structure and stroke order. They're simple. You've got the, the, the H E type of letters up and down stuff. F and E are similar. And then you've got the P and the R and the B. They're very similar. A, S, and K are a little complicated, important to know how to write. And, and, and you know, these are a good starting point. And for young children, maybe this is maybe a preschool assignment, maybe even before kindergarten, before you even know what the letters are, you can start writing it. And you don't need to explain stuff. Kids don't even need to read numbers. Just start on green and stop on red. What's the yellow? What's the yellow thing? Oh, that's a triangle. What's a triangle? Well, it's the yellow thing. You know, like this is just great for preschoolers. Uh, it's just pre-alphabet. So uh, I had to go back through all these sheets and change all the, the it was exhausting, very exhausting. See if I can zoom in, you know, so there's all the capital letters. Um, you get the idea. And then start with my, my curriculum concept was to start with this because these are the lowercase letters uh, that that are, you know, you know, and again, this is before ever really learning the alphabet. I mean, if you know, P's and lowercase P's, A's, E's, S, D, T, th those are the difficult ones. The kids don't know what these are, but they get used to writing words. And you've got, they're not pink, they're magenta, which is the pure color of that ink. There are, there are three ink colors, magenta, cyan, and yellow. So the magenta will only use the cyan color from the printer, which is good for budgeting. So that's, that's my curriculum. And I got it refined. I got it finished. And the, the exciting thing about uh, this week, it, 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 you know, this is a transition. This is, see, this was introduction. When you actually start learning the letters, it was this. So you took those, all, you know, all the letters and put them on the lines. And this is for early beginners, a little expensive, but, you know, print this off a couple times, ha have the kid, you know, write one line once a day. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, you could go on to something else like this, like, uh, <laughs> if you'll load sometime this week. All right, it's going to take a while to load. But, you know, you could go on to something like that. So I, I did this, and all this is free. Uh, the, these were later letters, learning to write words and practice particular shapes. Uh, you know, the, these are problem words. You know, the EE, -E, learning to write letters in groups, seeing the ascenders and descenders. I'll zoom in on this and show you what this looks like. Th this was my week. Uh, actually, I made this a long time ago. Uh, but juggernaut. I, I never knew what a juggernaut was. Uh, juggernaut is an important part of history. It's like, it's like a mini mobile castle. Like, you know, army goes traveling. It's like there's this big thing on wheels and it's got trebuchets on it, maybe cannons. It's got, it's, it's like this mini castle thing. And uh, it, it's like a castle away from your castle. It's like, it, it takes a long time to move it. Really, really strong. And it helps defend against attacks when you're getting attacked while you're attacking the other guy. I never knew what a juggernaut was. I, I'm, I'm ashamed to say. So we'll teach kids what a juggernaut is. Like, what's a juggernaut? You know, uh, This has every single letter of the alphabet. 
except Z, which I think is easy and should be practiced by itself anyway. So again, early writing, still not recognizing words yet. If you look at 28, there's a hyphen there. So we're practicing hyphens. And all of these letters uh, prepare for, the, these are the regular letters. I always practice sheets, cyan color, magenta for printing color management, solid black. Uh, they also come in dark and light gray. I've got blank papers, similar size. Uh, you know, the cap's 11, but you know, 10, you had all black lines, smaller letters, you know, moving on, capital, smaller letters for more advanced users. Again, a 24 line blank page. And I did cursive. Again, I would teach piano by first doing technique and then going into Francis Clark for the adult learner and having the student, usually about 13 years old, read through Francis Clark, do sight reading and understand uh, recognizing intervals on the staff, knowing only one note on each staff and all the other notes by the size of their interval. Francis Clark, amazing for teaching reading. Uh, the way I finally learned to teach reading music is I would sit with this awesome piano teacher for two hours and she would turn the page and say, okay, go on, play the next one. Okay, all right, you've messed up enough. Keep moving on. You got to move on. Moving on is part of sight reading, not being perfect. And she would do this with me and that was how you have to sight read. My mother used to ask me as a child, do I have to stand behind you to make you practice? The correct answer is yes. It's not irresponsible. It's necessary. Children must learn how to do their work before they can learn how to do their work on their own. So it's not irresponsible as a parent or as a teeter, as a, as a, a teeter, as a teacher or a tutor to stand behind the student and lend them your attention. If you're a lazy parent, you raise lazy kids. Sorry to say it. Raising a family is exhausting. We know it. And this is part of it. Get kids to do their homework when they're young. These sheets are a great way to do it. Stand behind the, the child and make them uh, go and write. These are part of that technique. I was just uh, talking with uh, a, a family today. They had an eight-year-old that wanted to try this stuff. I said, okay, great. And so they're my little experiment, my little laboratory thing. And, and I, the kid picked it right up. And, just, and I'm like... Don't write on top of this. Like I went to the printer, printed it off, and he wanted to set it down and write on it. I said, no, don't write on it. Just look at it and just do it really fast like this. And he goes, oh, and then he started doing it. It's like, now you get it. Now you can write those letters, no problem. So don't, don't practice the cursive letters until you practice the loops. And when you do calligraphy or you're learning copper plate, they will make you practice the loops a lot, as they should. Why don't we do that with cursive? Why don't public schools take a week or just, just even a week and just do loops and then do all the letters the very next week? Well, why one letter at a time? You can't, you can't write, you know, these, these, uh, cursive letters that I made. They're my letters. They're the, gra they're the, the greatest. They're the best letters. I'll tell you what, we're going to make America right again. I'll tell you that, I can tell you. But no, this is my design and I couldn't draw it out. I had to design it with like the vectors and get the lines right and, and it was exhausting. And then getting it to work with the printer was exhausting. But you can't learn to write this stuff by trying to write it. You've got to practice the curves. And then after you get the curves, this is just automatic. Piano is the same way. So I've also got these sheets. I'm going to click on this and show you what I made. What you're not, you're not working. You're supposed to, you're supposed to be a link. Well, I'm going to have to go back and fix those pictures. Guess I found a problem with the website. So yeah, you know, there it is. Uh, that's a, uh, it's just good for a practice sheet. It gives them some reference early on in learning. Probably that, you know, in theory, a student shouldn't need more than one. I'll click on magenta, show you what this does. If you click on the magenta one, uh, it gives you the, you know, the full lines. There you go. So I, uh, yeah, I made these. These are all free. Uh, and I have a number of videos that explain. I have numbers. Uh, these are ascenders and descenders. Uh, these are old style numbers. Um, 
have ascenders and descenders, uh, you know, D3, 4, 5, 7, 9, those are descenders just like a G and a P and a Q. Uh, ascenders like B and D, T, they go up. And that's, that's old style. It fits better within words. Uh, lining figures, these are kind of a newer thing, like, you know, only 400 years old or whatever. It's more for accounting. And I talk about Danelian, the history of Danelian. Danelian, Danelian was how I learned. Uh, but th this goes back to a history, which I, you know, I made a video about explaining it, geometric fonts and, and, and basic and so forth. So I made my own uh, cursive, my own handwriting cursive curriculum, and I made the, the normal letters to be able to lead right into the cursive letters, and I created all of it, and it's totally free. You can download it, print it, and I'm thinking about writing a book like a booklet that a teacher could use in a curriculum. Uh, let me show you two other things that are with this. I've been tweaking this past week. These are some old stories that are here on the website and great easy to easy. look at the little red hen. I, they, they, like this is the old original version of the little red hen. There it is. It's right there on the website. You can get a doc on Google Drive. You can do a simple HTML version. It's like it's if if you're you're using an old computer or something, you need simple HTML. Download, use it in a classroom. These are very, very old. These are original. Um, you know, you can highlight stuff. It's just nice to read and work with on a website, on a tablet or something. So I have a number of these old, old stories. Um, here's some of my favorite from Rudyard Kipling. Uh, and, you know, and I've got some more uh, Kipling stories, but Hans Christian Andersen stories. Great for reading, old reading classics, and I made my own. I would call them dot. C dot was the first one that I made, and then I made dot dot to follow phonics. So there it is. It shows the vowels, and reading this should be the first read. This is the only one with pink letters. The other dot ones slowly build sentence patterns. Uh, and they have an order to them. I wrote them all, and they slowly build more and more vocabulary and grammar patterns to try to train grammar you know, correctly. Well, we were just looking at handwriting. It starts with phonics, uh, which this is some IPA if you're curious, not a big deal. This is, uh, these are the vowel sounds. All these say A right here. Uh, this, is, this is, again, IPA, phonetic alphabet, if you're curious, short A. It's just nice to look at. And then there's your practice. Mat, met, mit, mot, mut, mate, meet, might, moat, mute, moot. Practice this and then go right into dot, dot, because there they see it. So I'm, I'm thinking about putting this into a book. Hey, I go on and on. I, I do some, uh, I explain why uh, we have the double letter for tapping and taping. It's, it's like the I becomes like a silent E. You know, the double letter prevents it from becoming like a silent E. It's some other sounds and things to practice to, to get it, you know, get things moving. And then several other spelling and sound rules. There they are. Very, very useful. TH categories. Th and th uh, odd spelling words that just don't make sense. Good, you know, uh, verb morphologies, how verbs change, how adjectives can change. So I, I'm thinking about getting a booklet that people can print since I've got so many books already up on the Internet. Now. Let me explain how this works. 88 typing words. As is, um, I, I took, again, I, you know, it's patterns. Teaching patterns. Teaching patterns, 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 patterns. Technique on piano. Technique with writing. It's the same with typing. I made this keyboard because I just couldn't find a good typing keyboard. I, you know what? I want to I brag here a little bit. If I can zoom in on my work here, there, there's my keyboard. Each key has a line around it, which isn't, it just doesn't just look good. This is a, this is a free Helvetica font. It's the text gyre Heros font. It's like Helvetica, but it's, it's, it's free and so forth. Uh, it's from the Gust Foundry. You, know, you can, you can search how to get it, I suppose, if you want. So, this is available as a vector, so like a teacher or a school could download this and change the font. The, the square helps identify each key, and then the thick black line behind 
these boxes without squares produces an optical illusion so they seem bigger, but they're not. They're exactly the same size. So, it has more attention, but it's just as easy to find as everything else. So, that was my method of indicating those keys without drawing circles, congesting everything, making it hard to find, without drawing little fingers over top of it. Just, again, simple. That's, that's the style I always wanted to go with. Well, if you look at a lot of the basic phonetic patterns, I came up with a simple list. I'm sure that Harvard is going to think that my idea is wonderful and go research their own better list after I invented the concept. Yay, Harvard, go for it, do it. But I found several letters to start with home row keys and slowly get more complicated that have different spelling patterns and sound patterns that occur in the language. So, if you type these 88 words and you have typed most of the recurring patterns in words, so most words you type, you've already practiced those components of the word. Okay. So, I click on this and here we are. Now, uh, let's see, zoom correctly. I've zoomed way in. This is how you'd normally get the, you know, zoom in once, and this goes about to the end. And then what you do is, there's your keyboard, and you start typing. Well, you know, this top here scrolls, and here are the 88 words. It's like 50 sum up there. And then uh, here's, here's 15 words that you all type with the left hand. Those, those use all left-handed letters. And then these 15 words use all right-handed letters. That's kind of the dessert at the end. And so here's 15 words. So why here we go A S K. And you just type it using the correct fingers until it fills up the whole box. Let's see how far we can go. Ooh, I made a mistake. And that's okay. Mistakes are fine and normal as long as they don't make up half of a line total. You don't need to uh, type another line. Oh, look at that. I typed so many mistakes that I could say, eh, it's less than half a line, but maybe I should type one more line. Okay, there. All right, I'm done with that word. I filled up the box. Uh, I did, uh, you know, fill up the box and I'm done. I don't need to count the words and that's it. Don't play these silly typing games. You want that, what in the world? Uh, custom list. Now, oh, here's the fun thing about this. I can copy this. Copy. But I can't cut. Cutting won't work. You, you can copy it and paste. Okay, you want to see me paste it to something else. Too bad. Well, I'll, I'll show you. We've got a custom list. I can paste here. See? Hello, mother. Okay. Copy, cut, paste, copy, or cut, highlight, cut, paste. See, it works. But watch this. I can't paste here. So teachers could use this in a school. I'm going to go back here to 88. It shows my list of 88. You can't paste. Here's another thing. Uh, if I, so, I, so if I do uh, hello, mother. I can't drag. So watch, I'm going to try to drag this because you know you can drag text. Drag it to the beginning, right? Oh no, it won't work. So this is cheat and test in, in, in geek and well, you know, mess proof. Custom list lets you paste a list here, but the box size is the same size. This, this box, the typing box is the same. Even if you zoom out, it has the same number of uh, words and characters per line. It's a monospace font. Very well designed. You can go to the typing box and there's no keyboard. This box you cannot paste in, uh, but this one you can. So if you have a text you want to work on, you can paste it in here. No keyboard. And this is not a fixed size box. You can change the size of it. But if a teacher needs to make sure that a student actually typed everything and didn't just copy it, they can use this. It's free. So that's, that's the uh, you know, 88 has the list. Uh, custom list, you can add your own practice words here in a fixed same box size, but then there's just typing and, uh, and that can be used for other assignments if teachers need to make sure that, that uh, if teachers need to make sure that uh, students are actually typing them correctly. So that's, 
that's what I've been working on. And I'm exhausted. I'm absolutely tired and absolutely exhausted from it. Well, I'm over my 30 minutes. 30 minutes is an approximation, not a hard line. I'm Jesse Steele. You're probably watching this at jesse.house. You're welcome to on Daily Motion. Subscribe to the Jesse Steele YouTube channel. That has all kinds of other little videos happening all the time. Dollar a month. This is ad free. And watch, watch for the piano videos I made 10 years ago on this. This is a badly recorded video, but it has the, you know, shows some of the, the piano methodology in it. 